much land to be used for some renewable energy project? Um, I believe that's correct as well, but I don't know the particulars off the top of my head. Okay. So, um, the question I want to ask you, in whatever capacity you can answer, is um, with the pressure from the federal government to, to lessen our dependence on oil and to look into renewable mm -hmm. energy, um, like, what other energy sources are being considered, are being researched, and is biochar one of them? Is biochar one of them? Well, no. biochar is a... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with biochar. It's in the demonstration. Uh, I, I think biochar, I mean, I think Kenneth's going to agree with me because we've had a conversation about biochar. It shows a lot of promise in it. We've, we've got land to do it. It's Well, it's, it's a way of burning um, plant residue, whether it be coconut husks or fronds or, you know, a, a more leafy, woody material in a low oxygen situation. So it produces something that's similar in chemical composition to charcoal. That then, when it's applied to the soil, uh, it acts as a catalyst for all kinds of beneficial soil organisms. There. Did, did I do okay? Yeah, actually there was there was talk about using an old Maui High facility of Hamakuapoko for doing a biochar demonstration and or you know regular uh, production system there. So, you know, I think that shows promise. Um, you, the other part of your question was, you know, what renewable energy well, it just makes sense that if, if the pressure is coming from the federal government to do this here in the state of Hawaii, and HCNS is the largest landholder in the state of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and HCNS just got a grant from the federal government uh -huh. to do renewable things, so connect the dots. Like what what is it being spoken, and what what is the renewable <coughs> energy source that is being considered? Yeah, the the funding they got is in the neighborhood of four or five million dollars a year. And it's for the next four years, I believe, it's through the Department of Defense, and it's because the Department of Defense uses a lot of energy for its, you know, planes and boats and its bases, you know, throughout the islands and throughout the world. So the Department of Defense is very interested in renewable energy. They're they're doing a lot of things on the bases on Oahu with solar and other uh, systems, but. Um, there is more than that. Yeah. Is not our interest. You may, I mean, we may believe that they're protecting our interests over the back or wherever they're at, mm -hmm. but they're not. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're directly protecting our local interests. Yeah, so and you know, that's just one of the reasons why I want to uh, talk to the plantation guys to ask them what, you know, what is the outlook? What, what do you think could be the logical outcome of this? Will it be that you're growing energy cane for ethanol production instead of you know, cane and wood is still need to be burned and there's a lot of unanswered questions and you know the whole idea of biofuels having research to you know kind of a lot over the past few years raises a lot of other questions like should we use land for growing food or for fuel or some of each or could they just you know produce enough fuel to run their own plantations, fleet of vehicles and you know there's and then you know do we try to offset Miko's energy production by doing biodiesel for them. Remember, they're burning about a million gallons a week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how are we going to produce anywhere near that? So, I mean, in conversations with Kelly King of Pacific Biodiesel, she strongly believes that whatever biofuels we're able to produce locally ought to go to the transportation sector rather than to the energy production sector because we have a lot of other good resources for energy production. One of which is, is geothermal, which I think holds a lot of promise for us. It's firm power, it's a closed loop system, uh, no emissions, and you know it doesn't have the variability that the sun and wind do. Um, who had the, you've you had that. Yes, uh, I was actually wondering what the county stance was on GMO experimentation. The county stance, there we go. Um, all right. Were, did you participate at all in the, the uh, recent county discussion where they sent forth a proposed resolution to the, the State Association of Counties? I didn't. No? 
go, because there was a lot of discussion, and, and Courtney and probably some others in the room were there and got a lot of information out to a lot of people in our community. And it's, you know, it's taking a step in the direction. And, um, you know, what you need to know about GMO, if you don't know, is that it's by far the most lucrative agricultural commodity in the state of Hawaii. It has been for the last five years. It's growing at about 20% rate a year in revenues. In, in 2010, this, the uh, seed industry made about $220 million in the state of Hawaii on about 6,000 acres. And compare that with, you know, I don't know what HCNS's revenues were last year. They had an up year. The year before, they lost $20 million. I think they might have made $20 million last year. But that's on 35,000 acres. So um, in conversations with the mayor, he said, you know, I don't think we're going to eliminate GMO, uh, at least on the county level, from his jurisdiction. And once again, this is something that needs to go through the county council if you're going to pass an ordinance limiting or banning or whatever you conceive to do. That comes through the legislative branch of government, the county council, or the state legislature, which has put a moratorium on GMO tariff. Um, what the mayor did say is, I think that we can uh, intelligently limit its footprint and stop its, you know, its, its growth into areas where we want to have other kinds of agriculture and not have any worries about pollen drift from here to there. Pardon me? Possibly contaminant. By, you know, we, we can do this with our community planning process. The Maui Island plan is right now undergoing revision. It's before the council. And, you know, with the right kind of language in there, we could say these are our growing regions for for vegetables and other commodities in upcountry and you know wherever, and say, and we deem that, that there shall not be um, genetically modified seed grown in these areas. So it would, I mean, the idea is, and isn't that what you got out of the mayor's uh, conversation back in December? Is he was talking about limiting. Um, That's what he said. That was one. Of, that was definitely one of his suggestions. And I mean, from what I know, they're already growing in Lahaina. They're in Kihei. Um, there's the Maui Farmers Bureau and other associations in the South Seas that maybe GMO at meetings at county fair and you know all kinds of things trying to sponsor school gardens. And, um, you know, I, and I didn't go that route. I didn't, really, I didn't feel that feasible to me. Um, I'm really glad that you're here and that you're talking about having a forum. I think that's a great idea. I really hope that happens. Um, I'm so concerned and so frustrated about the fishing because um, I know that Monsanto is leasing